With the Black Clover anime coming to a close on its 170th episode, or more like a hiatus, I feel like now is a better time than any to talk about this show. And by talk, I mean talk. Crap, crap, crap! What do you want from me? Hey bro, do you want Black Clover? No! When it came to this video, I originally planned on talking about this show ages ago. This video was a long while in the making, but I wasn't sure how to exactly format it, and or how to express my feelings of it. And to be honest, I still don't. But, with it being one of my favorite shows, and in an effort to convince my friends of a terrible taste for anime to actually watch it, I eventually came around to it. And man, there's a lot to talk about. So let's surpass our limits, and get to the video, shall we? Black Clover started out in manga form on February 16th of 2015. And I'm not much of a manga reader myself, but I have heard nothing but good things from friends of mine. The manga would eventually receive an anime adaptation by Studio Perio that was announced on December 24th of 2016. Damn, what a way to hype up Christmas, I tell ya. The first episode of Black Clover would release on October 3rd of 2017, and with its release, a new shonen was welcomed into the world, and what did people think of it? Yeah! What the hell is this? Now that we got all the complaints out of the way, we can now properly talk about this show. Black Clover is a shonen anime, similar to the likes of My Hero and Naruto, but with magic. This show is about a boy named Asta, with no magic at all. Eh, yeah, more on that in a moment. And Yuno, who uses wind magic, and both happen to be orphans given up to a random church in the middle of nowhere. The two of them wish to grow up and become the Wizard King, which for the sake of simplicity I'm not lace, I'm a wizard, and therefore I am always on time. is the most powerful mage in the land. It's a real simple premise, and it's established right off the bat, but the meaning and weight of this goal, in my opinion, definitely amplifies as each and every episode releases. So while simple, it definitely leaves room for it to grow and mean so much more. Now with the basic premise out of the way, I think it's time we discuss the world and how exactly it all works. Anyway, the world. How does the world work? In Black Clover, there's these things called grimoires, which actually do exist in our world, believe it or not. According to Google, they are known as books of spells and instructions to create magical objects or talismans, and apparently the term came about and originated from France of all places. Guess that's something cool you could tell your friends about. The grimoire takes a more literal approach in this world, and are given to young 15 year olds to help enhance and control their mana, and even learn some new spells along the way. There's a variety of types of magic like water, spatial, dark, fire, and sheep creation! Aww. To go along with this, there's also a group called the Magic Knights created by the Wizard King. Young Grimoire users can choose to enlist into the Magic Knights and to be chosen by a Magic Knight squad captain to help fight and protect the citizens of the Clover Kingdom. Now, how did Asta and Yuno fit into all this? They don't, in fact. Actually, they both die in the beginning, and the real protagonist is motherfucking Yami, baby! Told me we're real. So, Asta and Yuno, as mentioned at the beginning, are two orphans that were delivered onto the front doorstep of a church in the middle of nowhere. The two of them ended up growing up together, encountering many journeys and hardships along the way. The two of them consider each other rivals who strive for the same goal of becoming the Wizard King, for one simple reason. As stated by young Asta, it doesn't matter if you're a peasant or orphan. Anyone can shine in this world. And that's what the two of them aim to prove as they're both considered peasants in this world and want to show everyone that they can still manage to do great things. Despite wanting to achieve this goal, Asta has one main problem stopping him from getting it. He has no magic at all! This leaves Asta at a huge disadvantage as everyone else can use some form of magic to an extent while he just can't draw it out whatsoever. To compensate for this, he exercises a lot! Like, god dang, this dude is buffed as hell! I'm telling you, this guy is the reason that I actually try to exercise more often. Keep in mind, he's freaking 15! In all seriousness, it's really sad to see his hard work and dedication be unawarded entirely, while Yuno was able to get one, and a four-leaf grimoire at that. Oh, and real quickly on the topic of that, the number of clover leaves on the back of a grimoire determines the rank of the grimoire. Three leaves represent faith, hope, and love. And for those lucky to get a fourth leaf, get the added bonus of luck. And as for the fifth leaf, we will come back to that in a moment. As for you know, he's literally just vibing, minding his own business, without a care in the world. Hello there. Sing, sing, sing. Oh, yeah. Got it. This dude with chain magic comes in and ties you know up completely. Man, he appears to be in a real pickle here. He sure could use a. Sing, 
Sing, sing, sing! Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't work out too well. It is in this moment that Asa here is being pinned up to a wall, being told he can't do anything in this world due to his lack of magic, until suddenly... Feeling the courage and strength to fight back, a grimoire appears before him, with a five-leaf clover on the back. While the other four leaves represent all that is good in the world, the fifth leaf represents something a bit more sinister. A devil. With his newfound power, Asa charges at a blinding speed and takes the guy out with his new sword. The power he obtained from this grimoire is anti-magic being able to erase, block, and basically nullify magic altogether. Since Asta has zero mana at all, this works really well with him, as this will be a huge factor in helping him achieve his goal and compete against the entire world of people born with magic. After saving Yuna with this newfound power, the two of them do a fist bump on a really epic backdrop and vow to be rivals towards their goal of becoming the Wizard King, and this is what kickstarts the entire show. After this, the two of them head to the royal capital to be chosen by a Magic Knight squad captain and become a Magic Knight. Nino gets picked by the Golden Dawn leader Vengeance, the squad everybody considers to be the best, while Asta gets picked by the Black Bull's leader Yami, which is considered the worst squad. Spoiler alert, it's not! After this, Asta and Yuno part ways, and Asta is taken to the Black Bull's hideout where we meet the rest of the squad, the Black Bulls. I think now would be a better time than any to divulge into these characters, as well as side characters who will be accompanying the plot and Asa's journey to becoming the Wizard King, as I've sort of avoided that up until now. We got Yami, the Magic Knight Squad Captain of the Black Bulls. The dude is literally a retired shonen character, it's so funny. The dude has seen and lived through it, and it's always just fun whenever he's on screen. He also uses dark magic, which he uses alongside his trusty katana, and man does he do some cool stuff with it. Next we got Funeral, who acts as the team's quote unquote wheels. He uses spatial magic, which acts as teleportation to places he's been to before and allows him and his teammates to teleport to places they need to be. He will also just hit on every single cute girl he sees without a second thought. While it is a part of his character, I will admit it does get annoying sometimes, but it's one of the many subplots the series works towards to improve on for him, which also applies to most of the other members of the Black Bulls. Next we have Gordon. Moving on, Magna and Luck. Magna uses fire magic, while Luck uses electric magic. And the reason I'm pairing them together here is because they both like to fight each other and consider each other rivals in the same way Asta and Yuno do. They also both got their own flaws, with Magna being born a peasant and Luck being feared by many due to his power and that creepy smile that never seems to go away. Next we got Vanessa. She likes to drink and wear little to no clothing at all and uses string magic. Gray. She's shy as hell and she can shapeshift and create clones. Pretty cool. Gosh. Loves his Oni Chan way too much, the point of nosebleeds, and uses mirror magic. This dude is creepy. Charmy eats a lot and uses sheep cook magic or something. And Noelle, a young girl of the royal bloodline who can barely control her water powers. Is that all of them? No! While I did rush through all of them pretty fast, I do admit, at a base level, that's what most of these characters are. What makes them all special though, in my opinion, is their reaction to Asta when fighting alongside him. While most of the characters here seem to be one-dimensional and bland, I think it's intentional. You see, Asa already has his goals set in stone. He doesn't let things like status or lack of magic define or tell him he can't achieve his goal. Most of the members of the Black Bulls, however, have given up on their goals or aren't as motivated to achieve them due to social status or the world telling them that they literally can't which is really important and a consistent theme in this show. Fighting alongside Asta and seeing how hard he's willing to achieve his goal is what motivates them all to surpass their limits and find value in, the, in themselves once again and become really amazing characters in my opinion. This show really hammers down the idea of class discrimination and how much it can hurt and ruin people's chances at doing anything in this world. And despite it being a narrative that's been used in countless forms of media, it applies so much to anything and everything in this world that it makes you really want to root for Asa and everyone else to find a place in this world and destroy the idea of discrimination. And the way that's shown, in my opinion, is amazing. I know I spent the majority of this video explaining what Black Clover is, but I haven't really explained what it is that makes it so great for me and many others. And so that's what I'll be doing now. Allow me to go off for a moment here. This show is non-stop action. You want to know how many filler episodes there are? One. Okay, that's not entirely true. There's a couple episodes that act purely as recaps, but aside from those and side plots, 
there's really only one episode that's filler. And even then, it was just a fun episode to celebrate Thanksgiving. This show literally does not stop for a second. The plot is always moving in some form, which I know for a lot of shows is a real struggle. So I'm really happy to say that that is not a problem here. The fights here are amazing. I know I can't mention some fights due to spoilers, but trust me, these fights are great. Perfect amount of emotion, keeping you on the edge of your seat, great pacing, literally everything you'd want in an anime fight. Some really amazing music, and my god, the music in the show is amazing. I cannot name one bad track. Every track in the show corresponds perfectly to what is happening on screen in my opinion. And don't get me started on those openings. Good god, every one of them is a banger. If I'm being honest, I could spend this entire video talking about them. Hell, I wouldn't mind making an entire video explaining my thoughts on them. But for the sake of time, I will just put my rankings of each OP on screen right now. And for my last big reason for why I think this show is amazing, involves a bit of spoilers. I mentioned up at the beginning I would be using some footage past the Water Temple arc, and that is for this very moment. So if you don't want some minor spoilers, I recommend skipping to this timestamp right now. After the huge battle in the Water Temple, a lot of the members of the Black Bulls grew from that experience, including Asta. However, during that fight, he got his arms broken, which to everyone seemed fine and dandy. I mean, that can heal over time, and even with that condition, Asta was still able to fight. Seriously, my man fighting with a sword in his mouth! Hey Game Freak, Black Clover's calling, they want their mouth sword back! However, upon further inspection by one of the greatest recovery mages in all of Clover Kingdom, his arms apparently gained a curse. A curse that would basically render his arms worthless and not allow him to swing his sword ever again. To a normal magic user, this probably would not be too bad, but in Asta's case, since he can't use magic and he has to rely on his anti-magic swords to fight, this basically acted as a huge punch in the balls for him. Feral overhears this and tells the rest of the Black Bulls, which got them seriously down. As mentioned before, Asa was the one thing that got the team to actually want to pursue their goals and pass their limits. As mentioned before, Asta was the one thing that got the team to actually want to pursue their goals and surpass their limits, and with him out of commission, it hurts everyone so much, including the audience. Shortly after this, the team follows Asta outside to see him sitting on a rock looking up at the night sky, everyone being worried for him. But as shocking as it is, Asta had this to say. This moment alone is what made Black Clover amazing for me. A quick reminder, Asta is a peasant with no magic, no royal status, Nothing but his muscles and dedication towards his goal. The fact that he is this persistent to not give up, even to tell fate to go screw itself, it is, in my opinion, one of the most inspiring moments in all of media. I literally can't express how powerful this scene is. I mean, breaking your arms would be the breaking point for most people when it comes to their goals, but Asta? Heck no! Asta in this scene is what makes me see him as an inspiration, what I use to try to get my friends to watch the show. It was that powerful on me, and for those watching this show and everything that led up to this point, it will surely be just as powerful for you as it was for me. With that all being said, this is my review on Black Clover. This show was really something for me. It inspired me, entertained me, it was the thing I looked forward to every Tuesday. And as sad as it is that I won't be getting any episodes from it for a long while, we at least have the announcement of a movie on the horizon, which I'm really eager to watch in theaters. I really hope this video made you consider watching Black Clover. Even if you won't, I hope you at least enjoyed the video, and that you share it around with all your friends and leave a like and subscribe. I put so much effort into this video to make sure that it would be THE video to help get newcomers into Black Clover, so I really hope I did it justice. And with that, I hope to see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. And be sure to surpass your limits!